has impacted has been impacted a lot and and this that's why this is one of the sector where the technology has played a very important role and third what is our key trend which you are seeing in the restaurant specifically the restaurant so uh, just a quick background you know in terms of indonesia food service market so it is around 40 billion dollar uh, as on 2020 but because of covid this has gone down uh, especially on the high end restaurant and if you see this the point which you you need to understand is that online delivery is still a very small portion and that where the lot of changes are going to ex are expected to happen in next 3 to 5 years and people who wants to enter into this business or want to plan some kind of entrepreneurship journey this is a one segment which uh, provides lot of potential uh, to the young and budding entrepreneur so this 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 uh, you know online delivery is still very small portion of the total you know uh, physical delivery of qsr now this is uh, these are the this uh, quick background so in terms of outlet if you see the full service restaurant i mean you know high end restaurants still account 50% uh, uh, and the competition to this is a street uh, stall or kiosk which is around 45% so indonesia the two markets still dominate one is a high end restaurant again and uh, comparatively a uh, vis-a-vis uh, the street food or kiosk which is also very dominant force in the market and the self self services and limited services are small portion but in terms of value if you see this uh, the value again full services account for more than 83% you know where the, the entire money is coming in indonesia so this is one of the dominant area which got impacted a lot because of covid but i'm sure that even technology things will improve so this is a quick background in about the indonesia market i hope you get it now you know what are the trends which we see in the you know uh, in the hospitality industry now you know just technology uh, means you know anything you know so when we talk about technology uh, we mean anything uh, any kind of you know uh, uh, it service or technology engagement which which is used by the company at a different levels okay it could be as simple as using some app or it could be simple as you know using some iot material or any other material which they engage or like a accounting software that's also a technology so different level of technology uh, so you know why this technology has become very important for few reason of course you know the technology improve improve the processes so the process you know where there was a 10 process now there is one processor to give you example you know earlier you know 10 15 years back you know 20 years back used to call the hotel and say please take my booking but now just with a click of button you can do that so that is a process which is improved a lot secondly technology also improves to increases the revenue you know and it also reduces the cost because you are reducing the the middle or extra cost which is there so indirectly in reduces the cost the revenue because now you can reach to more people now with online booking app you are you know people from any across the world can book a hotel in bali or anywhere so that's the impact which is technology has now it also improved the customer experience you know earlier you have to call you know i still remember you know 20 25 years i used to call the hotel please take my booking you know why you have not confirmed my booking and all those things but now everything is got you immediately get so it's a improved customer experiences more option to customer and of course it gives you competitive advantage now if you guys know there's a there's a one uh, you know unicorn in india called oyo room now oyo room has a claims to be one of the largest network of the hotels in the world and the reason is that and 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 the main point is that they don't own any only any hotels all the hotels are their partners so that's the beauty of technology without owning a single hotels they are largest network of hotels in the world and that is what we are talking about you know you have that competitive advantage now some of the key trends uh, you know there are you know like i said you know a hospitality industry is one of the sector where lot of disruption happened lot of technology you know adoption has happened why because this is one of the big area uh, where people you know have have spent lot of money and it's a big market so you see every point some new technology comes and try to impact it so some of the technology you know which is voices now you know now you don't have to kind of type and mail everything you just do voice search and everything is managed from booking to even managing your in house so you go to the hotels you know you just sit in the room there's a there's a there's a alexa kind of thing where you just say that i need this 
and everything is managed in the hotel you know so so this is now what what if you see this what objective is served it reduces your cost you know you don't have to send the bartender you know the the service guy to come in you don't have to kind of keep 10 people with less man force you can work and people and, and the guest also enjoys his experience because you don't have to you don't want someone to disturb his privacy so it's faster convenient and also cost effective so this trend is increasing a lot and i'm sure that in the next 5 years this is going to take over in most of the hotels the second important is a contactless payment you know earlier you know you have to go you have to pay in dollars you know you carry the money uh, you know if you're traveling overseas inter countries and all that but now all this thing has gone you know because all all the e payment different kind of you know variables you know which is connected with with your devices you can make the payment qr payment is already there uh, that the payment through the mobile the payment through your virtual card all this thing are taking over like in singapore and other country virtual card is playing a major role as in in, in indonesia still you know uh, the the there's some kind of restriction where virtual card is not so much prevalent but of, of course few banks are giving but if you go to other countries you know even third party can issue a virtual card it's is so much prevalent so that is the trend which we see and of course that's going to impact how hotel industry work because if you're traveling to africa or somewhere or some other countries where you don't want to carry too much of cash this is the best uh, currency to go uh, the most important another important thing is in iot you know we have one course in iot but the iot is it's like you know you connect your devices like you see this you have central devices uh, or the hotel where you can control everything on your mobile you know from what music where somebody should come you what light should come in now this is a small if you see this this small pod now this small pod there's there's a small pod uh, you know hotel which has come in in many countries including singapore where you get these kind of small station where you can sleep and you can manage everything within one button you know when you want to wake up and everything so this is the trend which is saying so you know this is a uh, hotel come your a small uh, iot station where you can do anything with one button uh, virtual reality has come in now Uh, how virtual reality is changing the world if you can see this is a picture of one restaurant in china where you know they have created this environment of as if they are eating the food in the forest <laughs> now this is where the change is you know the the customers now want to see everything before they want to uh, join so let's say if you want to visit a hotel you know i have ex- i had experience you know i i booked one hotel in ubud in bali you know and it was one of the very costliest hotel i booked in my life but i went there i was totally disappointed because it was not as per my expectation now that is where the virtual reality come in where they will tell you that this is what actual what we have hotel can give you tour through the virtual reality you see this there yes, people are having food as if they are having food in the farm here the people are having food as if they are having food in the jungle now these kind of experiences which is going to take over and going to happen very soon or it's just already happened and happening in the real this uh, mobile check in is quite easy you know now uh, of course with this covid this has become more prevalent this already there in many hotels you know uh, in for last 5 years you know uh, i've been going to couple of hotels in kuala lumpur uh, and uh, i still remember that you know kuala lumpur many hotels have this you don't have to just go for check in just on the mobile you do check in and drop your keys you know that's far so you don't have to engage now artificial intelligence now this is one of the area which is coming up very fast you know where you know re- hotels restaurant they are more relying on data i'm going to explain this later on in a while but the idea is that now people need customized services you know and that customized service or personal service can only come with the data and with the artificial intelligence so let's say if i am going in the restaurant and every time i only order a indian food or only order italian food then the the menu which i should get in my restaurant is always about the italian indian food and that is what is about artificial intelligence by by using my data the hotel industry can predict what i'm going to need what i'm going to require and based on that they give me suggestion for example i am the person who always like to play golf so hotel industry will always send me some offers that we have this promo we have this event so the next time i go and that only happen because you have a data about the customer now chat box widely prevalent now currently you can still call the receptionist and book and ask the question but now chat box is taking over and all this thing technology again 
the idea is that customer get the answer instantly. You don't have to wait for morning, evening, daytime, lunchtime. You know, you just get all the answer what you get. So facial recognition is again another area which is going up, and this is how the facial recognition is taking control over the check-ins. Now, in this, these are just a few pictures. This picture is from the Singapore. This picture is from the China. Where for the check-in, you don't have to even uh, go and tap. You just do give your facial recognition and you get your check-in. Everything done. You will get your card. You don't have to give your passport. You don't have to fill any forms. And that is, again, the idea is to improve and how things are going to go. Now, final is a shared resources. Shared resources, a classic example is the OYO room, Airbnb, and all those things. Now, there's another concept which is there, which has come in that people who have some additional space or additional free room in their, in their house, they can lend out or bring that. So something like a Airbnb type of concept. So shared economy is again going to go more. So they are, they are one company startup uh, in, in, in India, which invites people for their wedding. So they, they do traditional wedding and the foreigner can join those wedding by paying a few dollars, uh, you know, and they can join and enjoy the wedding. So these kind of there are, are various uh, startup which takes you for the you know the the, the high octane you know uh, you know events for example they will take you for bungee riding or some kind of mountain to the high terrain which is very difficult. So people who want to explore that those kind of things. So everything related to this are coming now. So this is energy saving. So I'll keep that. Uh, so now you know we are seeing three trends because of COVID. One is that people want convenience. You know, wherever you go, people don't mind paying you extra money, but they want convenience. They want digital experience. You know, they don't want too much of human interaction. You know, they want things to done quickly. You know, quickly on the mobile and laptop, finish thing and move ahead. And finally, with this with this COVID, they also concern about the you know security. Now. Uh, there was a, a Deloitte research which was done uh, in US. Of course, this is not related to Indonesia. This is about the US. They said that, you know, the 75% of people now want that, okay, I don't want to wait more than 30 minutes. I don't know how many people, how many people in the group or in this, in this uh, session can wait more than 30 minutes. But frankly speaking, 30 minutes is a good time. You know, I want food immediately, you know, as soon as I order. And that is the, where the restaurants are under tremendous pressure. To improve their process, you know, even if you go to a restaurant, you don't want, uh, you know, after ordering you to get food after one hour. You know, you want the food immediately. You know, I have a kid. You know, they sit in the car and they say, within two minutes, how much time do we take to reach in a, a, res a restaurant? And which is like ten minutes in Singapore. But you know, they are so impatient. And the new generation, which is coming in, a completely impatient generation. They want things to be fast and good quality. So. The second uh, study, which was done by Deloitte, they, they asked that how many orders you do at least in a week. Now, currently it's 61%. So it means that a lot of the activity are going to happen online now. The traditional business are under the tremendous threat. Now, as you see, two years back, it was only 18%. One year back, only it was 29%. Now, this is a jump we are seeing. So if you want to start a business in restaurant, it has to be on E or it has to be on internet. You cannot think about opening the traditional business. If you're thinking about that, uh, you, you, have to, you will take a lot of time as compared to the trend which you see. You see the trend, 61%, amazing growth. And finally, you know, uh, what is a preference? If you see the preference of food, the most of the people say QSR, you know. So QSR is basically quick service a uh, quick service restaurant, you know, like McDonald's or someone which is a fast food or someone which give you cook. So you don't want to order uh, from uh, the place which is very high, high quality or fine dining. So those are the places which are going to get impacted. So these are a few uh, out, uh, results of the Deloitte. So I'm going to show you just last thing, the, 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 the app. So now if you see this, the digital app, for the off FMS is now improved. So 57% of the people now prefer to order food through a digital app, you know? And that's why, you know, all this digital app valuation is going off the roof. So now some quick trend, uh, uh, just four points uh, because I'm running short of time. Uh, so this is a, you know, a four or five trend in the restaurant, specifically on the restaurant. So if you see the restaurant, one is a smart data, which I said, so you take all the data, so, you know, uh, when let's say I order from one restaurant and I order 
is uh, only the three kinds of food. So they know my, my data, when I order, how much I order, what is my taste, what is my preference. So accordingly, they give you that data. Now, the idea is to manage my customer data which, so that I can manage my stuff. So a simple example, let's say I know that you know on the weekdays, uh, on Thursday, my order will go up drastically. So I will engage extra people to come for that. So the idea is that I can manage my staff, I can manage my supply with the data, I can integrate it. And again, I can provide a quality service to my customers. Now, these are the dashboard I just took from the internet from one of the, the food uh, food company. If you see, they, they track the number of orders, the items which are sold. So based on this item sold, they can order or, or have the supplies and the, the average ticket size of order so they can know that what is my order size and accordingly they can understand what is my delivery cost, whether I make margin or not. If, so all these data points, there are a lot of thousand data which is becoming important in for day-to-day -day analysis. Now, self-kiosk, again, the idea is to reduce the time, better customer experience. So these are few self-kiosk which is there, which is currently working. You And this, I'm sure that you already see in McDonald's, but you know the vending machine is also going up. The people want to order something, you know, online. If you go to many restaurants, you can just scan the QR code and you get the menu on your mobile. All this thing, the idea is to reduce your time and convenience. You don't want a waiter to come in, take the order and put it. You know, those kind of the idea is is gone. Now, ghost kitchen or the cloud kitchen. This is the next big thing which is coming in the restaurant business. The, now, what is this ghost and cloud kitchen? The idea is that. Earlier, you need to have the place to run a restaurant. Now you don't have need to have the place. What you need to do, you just need any place outside the city where you need to keep four or five chefs, uh, create the food and just deliver. You don't need any physical presence. Now that is a cloud kitchen. Now in Singapore, Singapore government has created a, a specific area where they are like many people can rent a place. It's outskirt, very cheap. You know, you can rent the place, you can cook the food, and you can deliver. Now, these are the few. This is one of the cloud kitchen. If you see this, 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 this is one restaurant. Beside there's another restaurant. Beside there's another restaurant. There's so many kitchens beside each other. And you can create food and you can deliver at low cost. So now you don't have to create or have the premises or you have to have a brand and take spend money on the renters, costly renters. And these are very cheap, you know. Uh, for anyone to take or, or take on them. And finally, the robots, you know. Now, these are the few robots. And just to tell you, the robots are not only taking in the developed countries, but they're also taking over in the developing country. This this is a robot company in, in, in India. You see this, they are delivering food. Now, robots are taking it all because, again, it reduces the cost. <laughs> the best part of robot, if you see this, they can work 24 by 7. <laughs> and And they reduce the cost, you know, best employee of the world, you know, who can work 24 hours. So, you know, so robots are preferred. Now, if you see the robots are not only in the delivering, they're also helping you to cook the food. So you can standardize. So let's say if I want to set up 50 restaurants in Indonesia, for me, it's very difficult to standardize the process because, you know, some people may have different way of cooking the food. Some people may not follow the rules. Now for robots, I don't have to worry. I just put the process and everything inside this and robot will cook a standard food for me in the 50, 50 places. Now that's the benefit of this restaurant. So the robots are taking over and they're taking over very fast. I'm sure that in next few years, I'm sure that we'll see more robots in the Southeast Asia as well. Now that's from my side. Uh, uh, I think I thought I keep my presentation quick and quick. So I'm happy to take questions and up to you, Anthony, uh, Andrew.